From the Oakland Hills to Jack London Square, the Port of Oakland to the Coliseum, KTVU presents Talk of the Town, an engaging conversation about the people and issues important to Oakland. Hello, I'm Dave Clark, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm here with a very interesting man who I am so happy and lucky to sit down and talk to. His name is Hardy Nickerson. He's the head coach of the football team at Bishop O'Dowd High School in Oakland. And first of all, Hardy, I'm so glad. So glad to see you. I hope I'm not going overboard and saying that. Oh, no. Thank you for having <laughs> me, Dave. <laughs> now, look, you, you've had a great life, great career. I remember your NFL pro football days with the Pittsburgh Steelers and many other things. When you think, I'll ask you first about today. When you think about being the head coach for Bishop O'Dowd in football and shaping young men, what comes to mind first? Uh, I'd say the first thing that comes to mind are the coaches that deposited something into my life. Yeah. Um, it started with my, my high school football coach, a guy named Lalo Mendoza hmm. in South Central Los Angeles. Um, I grew up in Compton, went to high school in Watts, the heart of Watts. Hmm. And um, Lalo was just, I mean, just, uh, a, you know, a father figure, a brother, a counselor, an advisor, just a great man all the way around. So that was my first, you know, experience yeah. with a, 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 a great coach. Then I, then I get recruited here to come to Cal, and Joe Cap was the head coach then. And boy, I had a great relationship with him and, and my position coach, a guy named Bill Cooper. Um, those guys deposited so much in me that go way beyond the X's and O's. And then, of course, when I got in the NFL, I had, had an opportunity to be coached by Chuck Knoll with the Steelers. And uh, when I first got in the league, Tony Dungy was my, my mm -hmm. defensive coordinator. And fast forward to uh, my days in Tampa where Tony Dungy was the head coach. Uh, but I've, I've been around a, a lot of great coaches. Rod Marinelli was another coach that had been around uh, he recruited me out of high school and then it ended up uh, he was coaching at Cal when I was there and then um, he was on staff in Tampa Bay when I was playing there as well. So um, I've had a lot of great, great mentors uh, in terms of or great coaches mm -hmm. that I've been around that that I've been able to draw on. Um, the greatest coach, though, probably was my dad. Really? <laughs> and I <laughs> he, don't doubt he, that. He never he didn't coach me formally like on a team, yeah. but he was the one behind the scenes, hey, you know, you need to do this better, hey, you need to, you need to pick it up here. Um, um, he was the one that was always pushing me to, to be the best that I could be. That, that, that's really important, I, I'm glad to hear that. So you understand how important you are to the young men at Bishop O'Dowd. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, I, I, I think uh, being a head coach especially at the high school level. And I've coached at, at the college level, NFL level, youth level. Um, uh, it's, it's a very, um, you know, it's a position where uh, you have an opportunity to really have a impact on young men's lives. Yeah. Um, you know, they're at that formative stage in high school, very impressionable. They've got a lot of different things that can influence them. Uh, good and bad, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, I, I see myself and my role as being that person that's going to help them navigate these years and and create uh, experiences and, and memories that they'll carry on for their whole entire life. So, Hardy, is it fun? Oh yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> uh, all aspects of it. Yeah. From hey, coach, I left my I left my jersey home to <laughs> to uh, you know uh, learning the X's and O's and and watching the kids when they execute a play perfectly and it works really well and seeing the confidence that they gain from it is just uh, man, it's it's priceless. Do you find yourself leaning towards the defensive players? As opposed to, now you can tell me. Well, <laughs> you're a linebacker. I mean, 
Um, I'm a linebacker. Yeah, at, at time I shouldn't say I shouldn't say that now okay. because when I first started coaching, um, uh, I leaned more towards the defense. Mm-hmm. Um, I this so I coached at Bishop O'Dowd from 2010 to 2013. Uh, my son was my son was at Bishop O'Dowd and had a daughter at Bishop O'Dowd as well. Mm-hmm. My son played football. Uh, my daughter played basketball. So when I was there the first time, of course, oh, the defense, I was all over the defense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so this time around, uh, fast forward, uh, my son has gone through Cal, um, transferred to Illinois when I was coaching there, the University of Illinois, mm-hmm. and has played five years in the NFL, and now he's decided to retire. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, he's coaching with me now, and he's the defensive coordinator. So. I've I've kind of transitioned over to off. yeah no. I've transitioned over to okay. offense so okay. now <laughs> okay now You're I'm free. Offense, yeah. yeah oh yeah so now I'm an offensive guy yeah yeah okay <laughs> so wow. uh, so yeah you know at times I find myself uh, hey make sure he's doing this make sure this guy oh, and then yeah. I go, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I got it <laughs> I got it okay did you ever growing up in Compton in L A did you ever imagine having Oakland as a part of your your daily life. You know, I I never saw it coming. Yeah. Um, I knew that uh, um, when I left Southern California to come up to Cal, I knew that I was coming up to play football, and I knew that I was I was coming here to you know I was going to get my degree. If I played, if I advanced on to the NFL, I thought well that would be great. But I, I thought that I would yeah, ultimately end up back in Southern California. Um, but here I am in Oakland, and <laughs> mm-hmm. and I love it. I yeah, mean, it's, it's a, it, what a great what a great town. It, it is a great town. And tell me about there's this lovely lady named Amy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> tell me about her. Um, uh, shoot, a- I met Amy my my junior year at Cal, and uh, we just we just been uh, been together ever since. Yeah. Um, uh, you know she's she's a very smart woman, and and uh, she's. Uh, supportive and some great mom we have three kids uh, I mentioned two of them yeah. Hardy Hallie there mm-hmm. uh, they went to Bishop O'Dowd and have gone to Cal as well I have an older daughter uh, we have an older daughter mm-hmm. Ashley and, and uh, Ashley is in a, went to Cal um, went to Hastings she's oh, an attorney man. now and she's she's in big law in Southern California Wow uh, so uh, uh, and that's all a credit to the job that Amy's done as a mom. Well, uh, and bravo to you too. Now, to uh, I've you. been in the back seat. No, I, I understand. <laughs> She's done and all the work. I, 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 t- I said I was going to brag <laughs> on Amy too. I, I got that in. Oh, it's yeah. important. Oh, yeah. It's important. Uh, is there a part? I, I remember you on the field at playing pro football and, and admired your talent, your toughness, your skill, and all of that. When you think back, to the playing days, is there anything that you, you're drawn to in particular? Uh, I, I think uh, the thing that I'm drawn to um, when I'm watching is, is defense. Um, watching, um, I shouldn't say defense, I should say just the overall execution. like intensity and yeah. execution of the game. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm drawn to. And yeah. I, I was, that question was particularly anything that you particularly did that you you were able to accomplish during your career that you your mind goes back to a lot oh your playing um, days you know <clears throat> probably um of course getting drafted by the Steelers um that was my favorite team growing up really I mean you couldn't growing up in LA in LA everybody was Rams fans yeah. and Raider fans uh, I'm still kind of a Raider fan <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the Steelers, it was it, I was a Steeler fan, and I grew up on Mean Joe Green, Franco Harris, Jack Lambert. As a matter of fact, I wanted to be Jack Lambert. I was Jack Lambert yeah. uh, when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. So that that every time I you know when I watch the Steelers play, whenever there's a yeah. game on, it yeah. kind of brings me back to that when I was drafted. One of the first people I met was Joe Green in the Steelers facility, yeah. and I just couldn't get over how big his hands were. I was like, wow. <laughs> He shook my hand and it was like engulfed my whole arm. Took up your arm. arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> man. And I was like, man, this dude is huge. I, I, man, you know, so um, it takes me back, back to that. Um, other moments, uh, going to Tampa Bay and, and mm-hmm. uh, when I got there, the team wasn't good at all. Yeah. Uh, had never been, to, hadn't been to the playoffs, um, hadn't had a winning season in like 16 years before I got there. Um, they hadn't had an all first team all pro player um, since uh, Leroy Selman, which was wow uh, uh, yeah. some time before me. Yeah. Um, and when I got there, I, I achieved that. Um, I was one of the team leaders that that set a foundation for a team that we eventually went to um, NFC Championship game and lost there uh, to the Rams, the greatest show on turf. We we lost <laughs> lost to that that team. Um, and then a few years later, after I had become a free agent and left, they, they had gone on to the Super Bowl. But still, I had a lot to do with yeah. uh, being a being a, one of the elder statement statements yeah. on the team and and uh, being a leader on that team, setting the standard for that team. Um, so uh, I take a lot of pride in that. You should, you know. And I really wanted to ask you, and. and Bring me back if I'm going in the wrong direction. When I look at the younger players in sports, all sports, and and I'm drawn towards younger African-American players, um, I worry a lot about the intensity sometimes being so revved up, uh, be in your face, uh, yeah. whether yeah. you uh, you celebrate too much, yeah. whether you're ready to fight at the drop of a hat, <laughs> either another player or in the stands. Yeah. I worry about that in, in real life terms. That one, I think it's real, it, it, yeah. it's a problem, and two, what do you do about it? Um, I, I, I think that's a concern as well. Um, yeah. And uh, it's funny that you brought that up because I, I had a talk with my high school team um, just, just recently about competition, what it's like to compete. Mm-hmm. You know, competing is going, giving your best effort, win, win or lose, um, from, in football, it's from snap to whistle. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then and then that's it. Yeah. There's nothing else to say. If, if you if you were su- successful, great. If you weren't successful during that during that that period, snap that's to only. whistle. Hey, hey, you got another opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I think um, I think it's learning what is what is what is competition? What should it look like? And then the extracurricular stuff you know yeah that's you know some of that is just i just i just uh i'm not a fan of of you know chasing the guy down and getting in her face and i'm just not a fan of that yeah and see i you know you you know it more than i ever could but out on the field you see it in younger players little kids we see it display on national tv among the pro and college athletes mm-hmm. it's an image that i think and particularly in oakland where we're, we're seeing the rise in violence so much i see it spill over mm-hmm. into real life yeah so I, well it gets bad when it's when it results in uh a player going in the stands after after fan or um post game um yeah. players players getting into it after a game or spilling into, uh, you know, something spilling into um, an off the field altercation or whatnot. That's, that's when it, that's when it gets, it kind of goes too far. Yeah. Um, uh, I think, you know, there's, there's a lot behind that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a lot to unpack with that. Yeah. Regarding, uh, you know, just with the uh, player reactions, um, Fan react, fan reactions, um, fans too. I mean, there there yeah. are some fans that feel like they could say anything to yeah. a professional athlete, mm-hmm. uh, as if that guy is not human and not going to react to it. Yeah. Uh, whether it's on social media or 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 being in the stands and saying something. Um, so, I think we, I think it's it, it's 
it's also a societal thing. Very much so. That, you know, I think we, we need to, uh, you know, everyone has to kind of look at. Yeah. Talk about the importance of family to you. What is family to you? Um, to me, fa you know, family is, is very important. Um, you know, shoot, I spend a lot of time, a lot of my time is spent with, with my family. Yeah. <laughs> All my time is spent with my family. Yeah. Um, it's just important. I think it's, uh, you know, that providing the support that, that uh, especially for my family, my kids, my wife, uh, and extended family, yeah. um, that's important to me. Uh, yeah, you know, as I try to paint a, a picture of people who who sit where you're sitting, the people that I respect and like, uh, I, I try to ask that question and just trying to see what what drives you, what what makes you stand, what keeps mm -hmm. you standing, and as a leader, as a leader, and as an African American man, what does that mean to you as a leader? as a man of color. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Uh, it means, it means a lot. Uh, uh, to me, it is, it is, um, it's, it's setting that example. Yeah. Um, it's something that you normally don't see in, whether it's on television or yeah. just, um, um, or talked about very much. Um, uh, but I think it's, you know, to me, it's important to, to show that, uh, you know, African Americans, black, there are black men mm -hmm. in the community that are, that are making a difference. Yeah. Um, we're not all running around with, with, you know, we're not, there's, we're not, uh, committing violent, cr uh, violent crimes or we're not all criminals. Yeah. Um, but we can, we are, you know, black men are professionals. We are, we are innovators. We are family men. We are um, fathers, mm -hmm. sons. Yeah. Um, we are a vital part of, uh, of our communities and we are difference, difference makers. Yes, we are. As we start to wind down, I just want to ask you just a couple of things. As you talk to the young men on your team, do you know you're getting through to them with the message that you're trying to <laughs> teach, or is it? <laughs> um, I think I think the messages uh, sink in. Yeah, uh, they may not they may not uh, take root right away, but I think the messages that that I've been that I've preached to my the kids that I'm around every single day um, their messages that that they'll they'll wake up 10 years from now and say oh coach said that coach said I've that. had I've had players yeah. tell me that from yeah. the past um, so um, that's and that's what's what's that's what's important that's what's gratifying to me yeah and Hardy tell me so the future, five years, ten years. <laughs> what do you say for for Hardy Nickerson? Um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. You know, um, I think uh, um, I've been working on a lot of different things, even outside of football. Um, uh, my wife and I have started a, a production company, and we've been producing some uh, uh, some content for mm -hmm. television. So we. You know, we just don't know. We've uh, my wife has written a book. How do you see us? And and uh, we've shot like a pilot for that. I'm also working on a film uh, documenting. Um, um, it's a documentary about centered around my high school football coach, Lalo oh, really? Mendoza, and, and yeah. Bourbon Day High yeah. School in in uh, South Central Los Angeles. Um, just uh, uh, documenting that uh, that relationship that he had. An influence that he had on the on the guys that came through the school, yeah. um, how who he was as a coach, yeah. who he was as a mentor, and then the school itself being this small Catholic school in the heart of heart of Watts, uh, South Central, where I mean, two blocks from the Watts Towers, yeah. um, and the influence that it's had on the students that have gone there, 
and the brotherhood that that, that it was still formed exists. that wow. sti still exists today. I mean, the guy that that I played next to, I was an offensive center mm -hmm. and I also played linebacker. But um, the guy that was my right guard, yeah, that's one of my that's my best friend, <laughs> one of my best friends to to, to this, this day. day. Wow. Um, and then we just have that bond. If we haven't seen each other for for years, when we get together, it it's like we never good. never uh, there was never that. A lapse in time from which we saw we've seen each other last so um working on projects like that that are that are uh that um you know they're going to be very pro very positive and very powerful i believe that i'm claiming it on credit thank you before it happens <laughs> all right a prediction for bishop o'dowd football this year um so we are um I shouldn't give a prediction. That's good. <laughs> I, I uh, he put me on the spot, Dave. <laughs> um, so we we start had a, had a slow start. We won yeah. our last game. We yeah. headed to league play. Um, I'm I'm saying we we're going to get on a roll and get in the playoffs. Okay, it's a great school, great yeah. program. Yes, and has a tremendous head coach. Thank you, Hardy Nickerson. I'm so glad you're here. And I have to point out, I used to watch Hardy Nickerson play for the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. When I was on TV, I didn't realize we were living in the same building, <laughs> Allegheny Center Allegheny in Center. Pittsburgh. But see, it was fate. I, ha I <laughs> had to meet you in Oakland. Hardy, thank you for being here. The best of everything with the football team, with the production company, with Amy's book, <laughs> and with your tremendous family and for being a leader in Oakland. It is a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Hardy Nickerson. I'm Dave Clark. I'll see you next time with Talk of the Town.